Hi, welcome to Math Movies with Ms. Feuerbeck and Ms. Veludi. Today we will be creating a line plot with fractions. Here's a story problem that we're going to use today. Martha tried five new cupcake recipes this week. Each recipe used some flour. Graph the amounts of flour on the line plot below. So we can see looking at this chart here that this is the um, amount of flour in each recipe. So the red velvet cupcakes used a half a cup of flour, the chocolate cupcakes used three-eighths cup of flour, vanilla cupcakes was one-fourth cup of flour, lemon three-fourths cup, and mocha cupcakes was one-half cup. So what we need to do is we need to plot this data on the line plot that has been started for us. Now there's several components of what we'll need to do to get started. The most important thing when you're plotting data on a on a line plot is that we want our information or our data data to be extremely well organized and easy to read because that's going to help us answer questions about the data at the end and help us get a sense of where the data falls on the line plot. So to get started one of the most important things we need to do is we need to create a, a scale. Now a scale is the measurement of where we're going to place the data marks on our line plot below. So when I take a look at the data, I see that if I were to put these data in order from smallest to largest, the smallest data point that I have is 2 eighths, and the largest data point that I have is 3 fourths. So none of my data is smaller than 0. So I'm going to plot 0 over on this side. And I would also say that all of my data falls between 0 and 1 whole seeing that the largest is 3 fourths. So this will give me a sense of where my data needs to go. Now, I need to go ahead and plot out an even spaced scale. So I'm going to go ahead and mark off 1 half. And as I look at my data, I'm noticing that all of my data is in halves, eighths, and fourths. So I think the easiest thing for me to do at this point would be to break my data plot into fourths and then into eighths. So I'm doing my best here to create an evenly spaced scale. And I'm actually going to go ahead and label each of these points. Here's one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, one half is also the same thing as four eighths, so I'll just put that there, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, and one whole is eight eighths. So now that I have my scale created, there's two more things that I need to do before I plot my data points. One is that I need to include a title. Very often students forget to include a title, but it's a really important thing to help us know what is the data. Are we talking about um, the length of grasshoppers? Are we talking about the amount of rainfall? Are we talking about the amount of flour? What are we referring to? So the um, oftentimes the title of your uh, chart with all of your data points is going to be very similar if not exactly the same as your uh, title for your entire graph, your entire line plot. So I'm going to call this amount of flour used in cupcake recipes. And I'm just going to underline my title to show that it's my title. Okay, as I mentioned to you, we also need to include a label for our scale. So what is zero? What is two eighths? What is seven eighths? What are these numbers referring to? So uh, I'm going to put down that this is, now I could write amount of flour, but no one would know what I'm talking about because amount of flour can be measured in grams, ounces, cups etc. So I need to be as specific as possible. In this case I'm going to write cups of flour because when we talk about five eighths or six eighths we're talking about cups of flour. Okay so next step is to plot the data points on my line plot. Each of these data points is going to receive an X and that's going to represent that it has been placed on the graph. So I'm going to go ahead and try to create an even sized X for each of my five amounts of flour, starting with red velvet. So that was one half. So I'm going to put an X there and I'm just going to check that off because it's a good strategy so that I don't forget that I already plotted it. 
Okay, chocolate was 3 eighths, so I'm going to try to make a similar sized X over the number 3 eighths, and I've taken care of that one. 1 fourth. Oh, okay, well now that's not listed on my graph, but I know that 1 fourth is the same thing as 2 eighths, so I'm going to put that right there. Check that off. Okay, we're up to the same issue with 3 fourths. 3 fourths, I'm going to just write it over here, 3 fourths equals 6 eighths as an equivalent fraction. So I'm going to plot my point over on that side and check that off. And, oh, look at this. We have one half again. So what I'm going to do is make in an x on top of the previous x at one half, trying to make it the same size as best I can. And now I have plotted all of my points. So just to review, the things that we included here in order to make this line plot was that we needed to create a scale that was going to include all of our data points and we're going to evenly space it and label the numbers for the scale. We also needed to include a title for our graph and we needed to include a label that indicated what the, um, what the fractions were referring to on the scale. Last but not least, we plotted each of the five data points indicated by an equal sized x over the number that it refers to. That's how you plot line data on a line plot. This data could be really useful to answer some crucial questions such as, what is the total amount of flour that Martha used the whole week? How would you solve that? You would have to add up all of these numbers and figure out the total amount of flour. Maybe someone would ask you, what's the range of the amount of flour used? Meaning, what is the difference between the recipe that required the most amount of flour, 6 eighths, 3 fourths, and the least amount of flour, the 2 eighths or 1 fourth? Can we subtract and find out what is the difference between those? Absolutely. We could also use this data to discover the mode or the most commonly used amount of flour in Martha's recipes. And we could look and see where the X's stand out as the highest amount or the most common X's in one area. There's a lot of other things that you can do with data points, but this is just a beginning. So remember, when you're plotting your, your data, go slowly, be organized, and uh, make sure that you are following a very specific procedure by checking off your data points so that you don't forget anything as you go. Thank you.